Hey, what's up? I'm Mike and this is Porty's Chop Shop. If you guys have been following along for a while, you may notice some things are different. The truck is on all four wheels, sitting on its suspension. Um, if not, let's just jump into what I'm doing today. So with the truck on its suspension and the steering rack secured properly, um, I had to move on to getting the steering column fitted. So most of that was just tacking the steering column in place on the old uh, body. It lined up surprisingly well. I had to cut some of the old stuff off the 240SX steering column, um, but for the most part, I was able to use that. The problem it was I had this old coupler on it, which is basically a sheath of metal, then a rubber coupler, and then a rod um, for the it's basically for damping um, and isolating road noise and vibration. Um, but for one, it's way too long, and two, it's too thick, um, and it doesn't fit the shortened path from the column on the firewall to the steering rack. So I had to figure out a way. I had to figure out a way to get it uh, to a more traditional steering style of shaft. This is three-quarter double D um, shaft. If you're familiar with steering systems, this is pretty common to use in like hot rod stuff. Um, so I tried to just weld it to the coupler by making a plate and then welding it to it. So this system worked okay. Um, I was able to steer the wheels, which was a huge success because I've modified the rack a lot and I've modified the um, whole front cross member and suspension of this vehicle. So it was uh, pretty nice to see the steering move uh, with the wheel but um, I knew I didn't do a perfect job and this was a little bit out of round um, from center on the rotation so um, as it rotated it was moving and flexing the mount that I used for the bearing support on this and that would eventually just straight up fail so I had to come up with an idea to get the steering column to the three-quarter double D um, with, without, um, with a high enough level of precision that I knew that it wouldn't eventually fatigue the mount and fail it. So, so I turned to the one thing that I do own that I know has a high enough precision that it could make that centered enough that it would not fatigue that mount. And that was my 3D printer. So to review, this piece needs to connect the original steering column from the 240SX, which no longer has a joint on it, to this Flaming River Universal smooth bore to three quarter inch double D, where it will meet up with the other joint that just goes straight into the original Nissan splined connection. So what I did was I made a cylinder on one side, it has the original 240SX steering column diameter. And then on the other side, it has the diameter for the smooth section of the Flaming River piece. And then I made holes. These are just supports for printing. These holes in here allow me just enough access to get my welder in there and tack weld this in place so that I know that it's perfect. This holds it perfectly concentrical like that, the two shafts. So once those are tacked in place, then I just break this apart and it's just plastic. It's strong enough to hold it in place, but not too strong to where I can't just get it off. Um, and it's, it won't melt from four tack welds. So let's see how it works. So all I did was I prepped this a little bit just so that the welder doesn't hit the oxide coating there. Um, and we get a good start to the weld. So I'll just uh, tap this in place and see what happens. All right, we've got this end on, which was a little bit of a struggle as expected. This side's on perfectly. So now you can see I have just enough room in there to tack weld this on all four corners, so basically securing it in place perfectly concentric with the shaft, and then I'll do a nice bead around it. But I'm only going to tack weld it in place now, and then test it to see if it flexes the joint. Um, All 
All right. Well, that seemed to work really well, actually. It held in place. It definitely deformed and turned squishy after I welded it, but it's gone back to hard now. So I have a little piece of three quarter double D here that I'm gonna cut and mock up in just the bearing here so it'll only be supported on one side, but we can give a test and then tomorrow when the rest of the rod comes, we'll put it all back together and we can check that out. All right, so this is only tacked together. This is tightened down right here. Um, but we can see now when I rotate this, it's not flexing this mount at all. And we'll get a better idea when this side is attached to the steering column and this side is bolted down properly. But I gotta make a little bit of clearance for the um, the set screws that hold this D, uh, D shaft in place. So when I get that shaft again tomorrow, then um, I'll fully mount this up and we can test it for real. But it's looking way better already. struggling to get that steering rack back in don't be lazy just uh, take your wheels off and put it back on the right way because that took longer than it should have um, we can see the general idea of how this is going to work now I just got this mocked up so that we can test the length of the rod that I need to make here it's probably maybe about an inch short total but I'll set the tripod up and jack this up a little bit and give it a turn and see how it works. All right, that last test was uh, up in the air. I'm going to test it again on the ground and see what happens. Well, that worked incredibly well. I'm super stoked to how that turned out. Obviously, everything's still just tacked together. I need to cut that rod to length and tighten all the set screws and paint everything, but it doesn't move the mount and flex at all compared to how it was before. Um, anyways, I'll do all that stuff off camera. If you guys like these new shorter uh, videos, let me know. Uh, consider subscribing while you're here, and I'll see you again soon.